more. And God's ready to pick you up and scoop you out of that. Amen. The Lord gave me the word for church. The church. Sunday morning as we were getting ready to come in. I just kind of stopped at the front door. And the Lord said, It's time that my people get out of the water and into the boat. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. It's time to get out of the water. Step into the boat. What's in the boat? Safety. Jesus is in that boat. When they walked on the water, Jesus is in the boat. We don't want to be in the water treading constantly. We need to step out of that water and get into the boat. Sometime in your life, you're going to have to choose, do I want to stay in this water or am I going to get in that boat? And I guarantee you, if you choose that boat over that water, number one, you won't drown. Come on. And number two, you will have a life of Jesus Christ. Because the Word says, Greater is He that is in me than he that is of this world. Right. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. We must stay focused in who Jesus is all the time. No matter who we are, what we're doing, I will tell you a story. It's a short story. Well, I'll make it short. Yeah, I'll make it short. <laughs> In 2004, I was diagnosed with Meniere's disease. That's an inner ear disease. What happens is, is the fluid behind the ear that sets up against the brain, that fluid actually keeps your equilibrium together. It keeps you standing up straight. It lets you take a step without falling. Well, here's what happened. What happens is the disease builds scar tissue. That scar tissue takes away your hearing. It's not that you're tone deaf. It's that what you can hear, you can't understand. And it's very, very painful. Well, years went by. And because I was called into the ministry as a music person, a singer, songwriter, all that good stuff, it's been a challenge for me. Big challenge. This last year in September, <laughs> it went into my good ear. So I now was diagnosed with bilateral Meniere's disease. That's why I'm not up here singing. Don't think that's not hard on me. <laughs> that's one of the hardest things for me ever. To think I can't hear tone. I've lost the tone to sing. Harmony or anything. But I want to tell you what God's doing through all this. This is amazing. Now in myself and in my human state, I have a lot of tears. My husband can tell you. <laughs> I cry a lot of tears. Without him, I'd have never made it through this. And in my human state, I have a lot of anger. I do. I can get very angry. And in my human state, I can become a recluse. I don't want to get out of bed. Why would I want to get out of bed? I get out of bed, things hurt. We have captions on all our television sets now because I can't hear it. If I have it up loud enough where I can hear anything, it blasts him out of the house. So we have captions on our everything now. But you know what? It's okay. I have to tell you, you're looking at someone who is on the other side of this. Because here's what God's doing in my life. God is showing me and teaching me the heart of worship. I am becoming Jesus' worshiper. Come on now. The heart of worship. It's, I'm in such a place when I get in the, in the presence of God and I'm worshiping, I literally don't know what's going on around me. Nor do I care. I sit in the back row on Sunday mornings and sometimes the music is so loud I have to step out, out in the foyer because it hurts so bad. I can't stand the pain. But you know what? I come in here anyway and I sit on that back row and God begins to come in. That song we were singing, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here? Yeah. Oh yeah. And within just a couple minutes, I forget because I'm worshiping God. Yeah. Amen. I have become a worshiper of God. 
heart of worship. Hallelujah. You know, it's what we take our what we do in our circumstances. Come on. And how we can get through those circumstances. That's how we build our faith and our character in Jesus Christ. Yes. It's through those. We have to press through. We have to move forward. There's no going back. Yes. There's no going back for me. Would I trade my hearing for anything? What's happening right now? Not what I've learned. Not what I've learned. I tell you, I went to a, a minister who is very anointed in healing. I went to a healing service. And just right after this happened, and she started to pray for me, and she was, the Holy Spirit was just all over her. She was just, she didn't have to touch me. It was, <laughs> and as soon as she came up to me and started praying for me, I took over the prayer. Boom, hands went up. I started yelling, Lord, thank you for healing me. Thank you for taking care of me, Lord. And I went on for about, I don't know, two or three minutes. Seemed like a long time. It was, really. She stepped back. When I opened my eyes, when I was all done and I opened my eyes, she came back up to me and she walked up to me. She whispered in my good ear. She said, you have got to calm down. God's already healed you. You have got to let God move in your life and in your body. I was in the way of what God wanted to do in my life. Right now. She laid hands on me and the Holy Spirit hit me and I fell. Sat. I fell in a safe seating position. I sat there for five minutes or so. My head down. I could have not moved. But I'll tell you what, I have never had more rest and peace as I had that second when Jesus took his broom and swept all that anxiety out of my life. He got that out of the way. Because I couldn't let him move in my life. I had taken it over. It's what we do with our circumstances that makes the difference. In our relationship with Jesus Christ. This is all about God. I don't know what God has in the future. But I will tell you something. I wake up in the morning and I arm myself with spiritual things in the Bible. Visions. I put on the helmet of salvation. I carry the sword of the Spirit. My feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Come on. My waist has truth around it. Come on. Breastplate of righteousness. And I tell the enemy, you're on notice, man. Because I'm armed and I'm dangerous for the Lord. <laughs> now, I don't tempt the enemy. I don't believe in doing that. But I do believe this. The enemy puts assignments out on us. Children of God. He gives his little demons, little assignments on us. And we must stand as Christians before the enemy and say, you are on notice. Because I'm armed with the word of truth. Jesus Christ is my Savior. Amen? Amen. You don't have to walk around defeated, hurt, angry. We have a family member that just has a lot of issues going on in her life. And I've been praying and thinking about her a lot this week. And you know, God keeps telling me and keeps reminding me, I got this. I got this. You're not going to change what's going on. You're not going to make anything different. God is in control of that situation. And I know He's working in her life. I know He is. And someday, when his timing is, things will change in her life. Father. And she'll be able to come to him and say, Father, forgive me, Lord. And make peace with the family. <coughs> it is going to happen. Praise Amen? Amen? Praise God. I 
to tell you these notes I've had. They just could go on for pages and pages. Paul states that love is not defined according to human standards, but by God, who is all love. That's who God is. When someone is transformed by God's love, they will reflect this love to others. I think it's awesome to walk up to a Christian sister, put my arms around her and know, feel the love of Jesus Christ. There's nothing better. Nothing better. What are the differences of faith, hope, from love? One day, faith will become sight. Hope will be realized. But faith and hope will not will be unnecessary in the eternal state. Love never ceases because God loves comes from the Almighty God who is pure love. He always was, He is, and He always will be. Amen. Love is the essence of Christianity. Yes. Love does not fail. Love does not fail us. Right. Jesus and it's all Jesus. It's so sad today. You see the knowledge. Christians do not have knowledge of the Word of God. Have you noticed that? There are Christians walking around, Facebooking, Instagramming, talking. They don't know the Word of God. I notice it a lot in our political realm. <laughs> yeah. Amen? They seem to say they believe in this, but they go a different direction. They are choosing things of this world because they think that's the comfortable way to go. If we choose things of this world, what happens? <clears throat> we get caught up in it. Eventually, we'll get caught up in it. The Bible says we're in the world, but we don't become of this world. We make choices. You choose things. And the choices you make have an outcome on the way you think, the way you live, and who you are. The Bible says to this day, choose whom you will serve. Be very careful who you follow. Be very careful who you choose in your daily walk. Make sure that you don't get caught up in the devil's playground. Things that look good, they're not. But know this, there is one God who will fight for you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There is one God who died for you and He's knocking at your heart's door right this second. And He says, you know what, I'm right here if you want to let me in. Come on. And I can take you to a place and I'll be your Savior and your Lord. That's who our God is. That's how much love He has. Yes. I've made some choices in this world, I'll tell you what. <laughs> when I was in my younger teenage years, my older teenage years, I made some choices. I wish I could have made them differently. Can't take them back. But we have to let it go. We have to let things go. Walk away. Step out of the water into the boat. Right. Amen. We have to step out of the treading water and get into the boat. Right. Amen. 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 Praise God. God is love. God loves us so much. He's coming back to get me. <laughs> How many is going with me? Huh? Somebody said to me, they didn't know how fast they were going up. I said, no, 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 no. The Bible says we're going up in the shrink meet of an eye. I'm gone. <laughs> I don't think you're going to look up and see people floating up around. No, 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 no. I'm out of here. When it comes time, God comes to get us. When, this is my one of my favorite things. When God says to his son Jesus, go get my bride. Yes. Can you imagine? The trumpet of the Lord will sound. Yes. 
And blinks, it's not a blink. A blink is when you close your eyes. No, nope, that's too slow. I'm going up faster than that. I'm gone. Praise God. <clears throat> I'm ready to hear that trumpet. Let's all stand. Praise God. I hope that you all enjoy the presence of the Father. That's what we're here for. That's all we're here for. Is to get together and worship together. There's always just a camaraderie of people when we come together and we're worshiping Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I want to thank you all for coming. We do have some goodies out in the foyer. Please say don't leave without saying hello. And those of you who, if you don't have a church home, we welcome you to come back in the morning here.